Hey, Dream Drivers, welcome to episode 171. And in today's Driver's Ed, we are going to be talking all about networking. Hey, this is Raina Campbell, your chief Dream Driver, and welcome to the No Parking Podcast, where through conversations and discussions with creators like yourself, we'll find interesting approaches to help you take your dreams out of park, put them in drive, and ride towards success. Hey guys, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in today. This episode of networking is one that you guys have requested for a long time. So I'm actually very, very happy to be talking about it. But at the same time, as you know, these solo episodes, these driver's ed series episodes have really been kicking my butt. Um, I know this whole month of September, I've been late on publishing, but life happens sometimes and you kind of get thrown off schedule, but you still deliver, right? That's one thing I want everyone to remember that although your schedule may change, it doesn't have to change the dream. You just have to readjust things as they come. Um, So what have I been up to this past week? To be honest, I think the highlight of my week has been binge watching This Is Us. It's a show that I've probably watched the first three episodes and I kept saying, you know what, Raina, you're going to watch the rest of it. You're going to watch the rest of it. But I never got around to it. But just somehow this week, I'm like, you know what? I am going to get into This Is Us. And I kid you not, NBC is not paying me to say this, but every single episode that I've watched, and I want to say I'm about like 20 episodes in every single episode I've cried. And for me, that is um, a marker of great storytelling. The NBC team at This Is Us is just, they are creating a story that touches on so many things that I know all of you dream drivers can probably relate to. So this week has been me processing my feelings about lots of things in my own life based upon a fictional show. And it's something that I really love about storytelling. I love the way that fictional narratives can help us reflect and process things in our own lives. So for any of my creators out there who feel like your work isn't, you know, understood, know that your work does matter. Um, It just also makes reaffirms to me why it's so important for me to continue using my gifts and to really help highlight the stories of others because it's those stories that help push people forward and help people process things that they're, you know, going through in their own lives. So when I was in LA, I attended the taping, a taping, I should say, of the Steve Harvey show. And after the show, Steve does like these speeches and these talks with the audience and something that he said has really, really been sticking out for me, has really been, you know, on my mind for the past few weeks as well. And he said, your career is what you pay for, your gift is what you're made for. And for the past few weeks, I have been really, really not doubting my gifts, but really thinking about what's next for me in life, right? What is my unique gift? What is it that thing that I am like running away from? And it's funny because in the text message conversation that I have with some of my podcasting sisters, you know, one of, one of them, uh, it was actually, Joy, Dr. Joy of Therapy for Black Girl, she's like, you know, no more looking away from the gift, Rain. And we were talking about something in particular. And it's just something that I know a lot of you guys can probably relate to. And I know this episode is supposed to be about networking, but I just really feel like talking about this right now. So I think that all of us know that there's something inside of us that we do better than than nobody else does. And it's also something that I've been learning even with doing these solo episodes, right? It's so, so difficult for me to, you know, just confidently get behind the mic and talk about something for an hour, however long, and not doubt myself. But when I'm interviewing somebody, I never really doubt myself. Like, I mean, I might get nervous, but when I talk to somebody, I just get in my zone. And when I was, you know, in the audience at the Steve Harvey show. That's all I could think about was like, what's that thing that I can just do when you wouldn't have to pay me for? What's that thing that I just feel so confident when I'm doing it? And it really is talking to people and it is really helping people showcase their stories. And yes, there are other things that I'm passionate about. There's other things that I'm skilled at. There's other things that I'm adept to doing, but I think my gift is helping to help people see what their stories are and helping to share stories with the world. And right now through podcasting, that's what I've been doing. But if there's something that you're really, really, you know, 
contemplating in life, you know, whether you're in business school and you feel like it's not the place for you and you know there's something deep down inside of you that you want to pursue. Remember that line from Steve Harvey, right? Your career is what you paid for. Your gift is what you're made for. And there are certain innate things in all of us that really make us unique and special. So before we get into the episode, you guys, remember if this is your first time listening, we can be followed on social. I love when you guys are sharing and following, you know, the Dreams and Drive brand on social. We are Dreams and drive across the board facebook twitter and instagram and if this is your first time listening as well make sure you hit that subscribe button so wherever you're listening hit the subscribe button so that you get notifications every time we have a new episode and i'm going to preface this episode with saying every book that is mentioned from now on And each new episode is going to be listed at our Dreams and Drive bookstore. So if you want to buy any of the networking books that I'm going to talk about in today's episode, just go to dreamsanddrive.com slash bookstore. And on the same note, remember that Dreams and Drive gear, if you want a Dreams and Drive t-shirt, hoodie, or sweatshirt, just go to dreamsanddrive.com slash shop and you can order your gear today. Shout out to Jatia. Jatia, oh my God, I hope I'm saying it right, um, of Natural Networker. She purchased a shirt last week to wear to an event that she did with teenagers, you know, this past weekend. And I just really appreciate when Dream Drivers are out here repping the Dreams and Drive brand because I could not do this without you. All right, so let's get into the meat of this episode. I know networking can be a very, very Tough topic for a lot of people. It can be very scary. So instead of trying to go really, really like detailed, I want to give you some of my best tips and strategies when it comes to how you approach networking. Now, everyone's networking strategy is going to be different, but let's start with number one, defining what networking is. So the the definition that I got from Google that I like the most is this, interacting with other people to exchange information and develop contacts. So for me, I would basically see networking as building relationships, building communities, building, you know, interwebs of connection of some sort. That it was that is what networking is to me. And I know there's a saying out there that says your net worth is your network, and I really do see that, right? Your network, your your communities around you, those are the foundations That's what's lifting you up. That's what's supporting you. So a lot of us, as we're building our brands, as we're dream driving, we oftentimes don't invest in building our network, building our community. We think that we can do everything alone and we definitely cannot do things alone, right? I want you guys to remember that your network is going to be incredibly important as you're dream driving, whether that be your immediate network, like your family or your relationships, your friends, that's important, but also your professional network, your dream driving network, the people that you meet along the way, the people who are in the gas station, the people that are in the car store, the mechanic, you know, the people that are on the side of the road, the the street lights that are guiding you along your path. Those people are so, so important. So before we get into the tips, though, I want you to think about what are the goals of networking? What are the metrics of networking? For me, it's the communities, people that I can call on, those relationships. It's also knowledge, right? Your network is comprised of knowledge. What and who do you have access to that can give you knowledge and value? And at the same time, That will translate into another metric that I think is the dollar signs, like your money, right? The referrals, the amount of people that you have in your relationship network or whatever, your relationship web, your spider web, that can also add to your net worth, literally. So there are two books that I think are really, really good that helped me very early on in my career. So the first book that I'm going to recommend to you guys is Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. And it is a great, great book. It's available in our Dreams and Drive bookstore. If you want to check that out, that's dreamsanddrive.com slash bookstore. And the other book that I'd recommend for anyone who's beginning on their networking journeys is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It is a classic, but it's something that I highly recommend, okay? Available at dreamsanddrive.com slash bookstore. So number one, let's think about this. When you're networking, you have to know who you are. Who are you and what do you want? And that goes back to the whole idea of having a strong idea of what your personal brand statement is. What's your elevator pitch? What are you even out here networking? What are you trying to do it for? A lot of us forget that. So I'm going to 
repeat what mine is. Hey, my name is Rainy Campbell. I am the host of Dreams and Drive, which is a weekly podcast for creative and lifestyle entrepreneurs who want to learn how to take their dreams from park to drive. That's my statement. That's what I can tell to anyone. What do I want? I want to connect with other people who fit that demographic, the lifestyle, creative entrepreneurs, even people outside of it. But the common theme that we all share is taking our dreams from park to drive. Now, you can also work on your own statement, whatever it is, but it's very key that you know what you want and that you know what you want out of everyone who you're trying to connect with. And now, mind you, you won't always know what someone can give you, but you should go into it knowing what you hope to get out of that person and what you initially see and where you think there's some mutual synergy. I love that word. I don't know where I read it before, but I love when I'm connecting with people, I'll say, you know, I think that we have some mutual synergies or there may be some synergies between our projects. That seems to always get people to respond to me. So that goes into knowing how to provide value. I think a lot of times when we're networking, we're very selfish. We're always thinking about give me, give me, give me. But we need to be thinking about how can I give you? How can I give you? How can I give you? What can I give you, right? How are you going to provide value? Each of us has a unique gift, as I was saying before. And for me, it's storytelling. It's the innate ability to to storytell. And because of that, I have a strong network. So for me, something that I'm able to use as part of my networking mission statement is, hey, I can provide some type of assistance or I can help you in some type of problem that you're having because I have this network of people that I know. Number three, when you're networking, you have to be willing to put yourself out there. I think a lot of times people think that people will come to them. No matter if you're an extrovert or introvert, you need to take ownership of the fact that you, if you're entering into the networking realm, have to be committed to the end goal, which is what are the metrics? either increasing community, increasing your web of knowledge or access to knowledge or sales or referrals, whatever that is, right? You need to know that that's what you're in it for. So if you're extroverted, that's fine. Figure out a strategy for making that help you win. If you're introverted, that's fine as well, but you cannot use that as a crutch. You have to use it as a leverage point. Number four, be strategic depending upon the channel and the form. A lot of us think that we can network the same way in whatever position we are in, and that is totally false. For example, in-person networking is very different from online networking, right? In-person networking, that's that's when you're at an event. You have to really rely on your ability to listen to people and to have good eye contact, good body language, all that stuff, right? Whereas social media, you can create the message and edit the message. You can use the the flow culture that's being created at that moment in order to get your way in and start conversations. But one thing that I'll always say is that the conversation is going to be important no matter what channel it is. For example, Instagram networking, you know, you're more likely to comment or to like or to DM. This is quick exchange of information or maybe even longer, right? LinkedIn is definitely going to be more professional, very to the point, uh, very targeted. It's going to be more of a let me be very, very detailed. You have access to this person's whole professional resume. Be detailed when reaching out, right? You know, when you're on LinkedIn, you're not there to talk about, you know, personal things initially. You're very, you're very targeted in your approach and people know why you're on LinkedIn. You're there to connect, which is why LinkedIn is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite places to connect. Um, conferences, for example, people know you're, you're normally there with people who are like-minded, I think a lot of times at conferences, people go there trying to meet everyone. No, for me, it's all about quality over quantity. When you're in a space where everyone is your target, you need to then say, all right, but I want to have the best conversations and have you know, connections that will last outside of the conference. So definitely, definitely be strategic. Learn about the different ways that your channel, whatever channel of networking that you're going to use, what's the best way to leverage the best parts of each channel. 
All right, number five, branding is key. Like I'm telling you guys, when you're networking, you want to make sure that you're memorable. You want to make sure that every action you take, that's a way that someone's going to remember you. So for example, right, if I meet you and I have a red Dreams and Drive t-shirt on, you're going to remember me as, oh wait, that's Raina from Dreams and Drive with the red t-shirt. If I say to you, hello, shake your hand, you're going to remember that, right? If I, you know, offer you something, if I give you a sticker afterwards, like Every interaction that you have with people is part of networking and it's also part of branding, which I think is another part. So you have to be very cognizant of what and how you are speaking to people, the the way that you're making them feel. That's all so important. Another thing that I think is important is your process. How are you organizing the people that you're meeting? How are you keeping track of it all? Now, some people use different CRM tools. Now, a CRM is called a customer relationship management uh, platform. You know, Salesforce is an example of a CRM. Uh, I, for instance, when I first started out, I used a simple Google Doc spreadsheet. So everyone that I met, I would then put their information into this Google Doc and then sort them and then have a status bar for if I email them, or whatever the next step was. Now, I did create a uh, tool and a sample spreadsheet that you guys can download and you can use at your own leisure. And that's available at dreamsanddrive.com slash free, dreamsanddrive.com slash free. Just scroll down to networking. And you can download it there. It's very, very, very easy. And it's a great way. I think a lot of us sometimes are just networking and not keeping track. If you can't keep track of it, you won't be able to know if you're successful or not. So definitely download that tool. It's also going to be available on this episode show notes page. Number seven, uh, create your own way. I think a lot of times we think that we have to, you know, you have to follow all the tools that I'm telling you to the T. You really don't. You can definitely create your own networking that is, is, Make is comfortable for you. You definitely may have to take yourself outside of your comfort zone to get started, but you definitely want to find something that's comfortable for you and that works for you. And only you will be able to answer that. Um, number eight, network without expectations. A lot of times we're in it because we think we have to get something. And if we don't get it, we're disappointed. I'm telling you sometimes the best conversations, like I remember if you guys love that episode with Sarah Vega, episode 86, Sarah and I met like when I just graduated from college back in 2000, like 13, 2014 at, um, I want to say emotions event in the city. And it really was just, I loved her style. She was blogging. I was blogging. We exchanged information and we said, Hey, let's keep in touch. Little did we know, little did I know like a few years, like three years from then that she'd be a guest on my podcast. One of the most successful episodes I've ever had. Right. Like you never know. And that's why I sometimes think those are the most genuine conversations when you're just both mutually interested and committed to just getting to know each other. Number nine, another big thing that I think a lot of us are, you know, forgetting about is the whole idea of you have to network outside of your industry, right? Only knowing the people in your circle won't ever help you get out of the circle. You have to be willing to to put yourself in new spaces in order to help build your web. If you think of networking as a web of relationships, right, it's going to get kind of incestual at some point if you're only in your little circle. Create new circles outside of your circle so that you can always link back to the circle and help those in your circle get out. So think of ways that you can learn about new industries because I'm telling you there's always lessons that you can learn from what's working or what's not working in another industry that can definitely help you along your own path. So when thinking about how you're going to network, always make sure to include things that are not always directly connected to you. Number 10, take a leap. A lot of us are scared. A lot of us, you know, are scared of rejection. I remember, uh, who did I email once? Michael B. Jordan's publicist. Cause I really, really just loved him. I wanted him on the show. I thought, you know, we're both from New Jersey, both from the same County. It would be a great story. And I said, you know what, Raina, just email him. You never know what's going to happen. And I got rejected. His publicist said, no, this is about like a year ago, but 
that I was able to win out of it because she noticed I was from Jersey and she said, hey, you know, I'm from Jersey too. And we were able to start a small, small, small conversation, but at least I took the leap. And if you don't take the leap, you'll never know what's on the other side. So that's something I want to recommend to everyone listening in is don't be afraid to take a leap. All right, so my next point is knowing you're in, you have to know what's special about you and what's like that thing that, you know, you can leverage that can help you get things. Like, what's your sweet spot? So for me, I know having conversations is my sweet spot. If I can get in the networking funnel, whatever it is, right? If I can get people to having some type of conversation, that's what's going to help people remember who I am, what I am, and what my mission is. All right. So number 11 is the importance of following up. I think a lot of times when we're having these networking conversations, a lot of us are just doing it one and done, right? If you try to reach out to somebody and they don't respond, you just give up. A lot of times that initial conversation, that initial ability to connect may take three or four times, but you have to be persistent and you also have to be pleasantly persistent. It's something that I remember when I was reaching out to the people who do like Capital One partnerships, uh, the lady, she was like, you know what, Raina, one thing that I loved about you is that you were pleasantly persistent. Now, I know a lot of times you guys may have had somebody who's trying to connect with you and they're just downright annoying or they make you feel pressure. They make you feel bad if you don't respond. I definitely had that. But to have someone tell me that I was pleasantly persistent meant that they knew I was following up, but they knew I was genuine about it. Like I wasn't pressuring them. I wasn't like, you know, emailing them every five days or every five hours. I let time pass between, but I also made it known that I was serious about really trying to establish some type of relationship. So in whatever way that you're connecting with someone, make sure that you're following up, but you're doing it in a very tactful way that you won't come off as annoying. Because let me tell you, people will write you off if you are that annoying ass networker. So I want to take a quick second just to make sure that we talk about what are the elements of a good networking pitch, right? A lot of times this is going to be done via email, via written communication of some sort. So I'm going to take you through just a simple, simple exercise that you can use in order to have a successful networking pitch that gets read and that gets responded to. So number one, we want to start with the email, right? You want to make sure you have the person's correct email. Don't email somebody who, don't email someone's assistant. Try to email the person directly. Make sure if it's a professional contact, you're using their work email, right? So let's say I want to talk to someone who works at the Oprah Winfrey Network, I'm going to send them an email to their Oprah Winfrey Network email address, not their personal. Make sure you're fitting to the channel and to the type of connection you're trying to make, right? Next up is the subject line. So if you're trying to connect, be very specific. Like, let's say I'm reaching out to someone because for me, having someone or an as a guest or my show, that is a form of connection, right? So I would say in the subject, would love to have you as a guest on Dreams and Drive. That is a very direct way. They know what they want. They know what the email is going to be about. Or you can say something along the lines of, let's say it's a different type of connection and someone that you met at an event. You can say following up, colon, met you at the blah, blah, blah event. Let's connect. Or, you know, you can do something a little bit creative. You can say, let's connect. We have mutual interests or something along. We'd love to know more about blah, blah, blah. Just make sure the subject line is to the point. It tells the person what they can get out of it. And also it makes itself easy to be read. Now, when coming to the body of the email, I always like to start with a very simple, you know, greeting. Hey, Hello, hi, address the person by their first name, however you want to meet them. I always start with, hey, who are you, right? Who are you? What is it? Why do I need to know you? You can say, or I would say, hey, my name's Raina. I'm the host of Dreams and Drive. We were both at, uh, let's, let me make up a fake situation right now. Let's say I met, um, 
I'm going to keep it in line with the Oprah theme, Oprah Winfrey's assistant. Let's say I met her at an event. So because I met her at an event, I'm going to say, so the subject could say, hey, following up, would love to chat more. So that means we already met because since I'm following up, would love to chat more. She's going to say, oh, we already had a conversation. So first line, hey, hey, blah, 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 whatever her name is. My name's Raina. We met at the blah, blah, blah event. As you know, as I mentioned, I have a podcast called Dreams and Drive, which is all about telling people how to or teaching people how to take their dreams from park to drive. Now, once you do your intro and you establish the connection and what you want to do, you want to say, what is it that you want from it? Right. What is it that you want? I would love to chat with you again to learn a little bit more about what you do at the Open Winfrey Network and some of the projects that you're working on because I think there could be some synergies between our project, whatever it is, right? Now, this is the most critical part. You need to have something personal there. You can say, or I could say, following our conversation, I was so inspired by what you told me about how you were able to go from intern to executive assistant. It's something I admire and am working towards in my own career, something like that. Have something personal there. Make them feel, make them show, show your genuine interest. And then what I think is very, very key is you need to have something in your email or method of communication that can be an easy way for them to say yes. Because in networking, you want to make sure you can continue the conversation. So maybe this is what I would do. I would say, hey, are you free in the following weeks for a quick phone chat? Let me know if you're available or what works best for you. Then you simply just say, all right, talk to you soon. And then sign off. It's very simple, right? You want to make sure that who you are is very clear, what you want, what's the value, what's going to be the reciprocal action that will be taken from this communication or this relationship building, and then leave a way for them to have to say yes or email you back and continue the conversation. Now, that's a tactic that I got from that Guerrilla Marketing Remix book that I told you guys about in episode 170. If you want to get it, it's really good on marketing, sales, the whole gamut. Learning how to sell is also really important when you're trying to network because you're going to learn about the psychology of communication and the psychology of getting reciprocal action taken. All right. So hopefully that wasn't too much over your heads, but you'll just kind of work through and it takes some time. It takes a lot of practice and you'll tweak it along the way, depending upon who you're talking to, but definitely keep those key points in mind. Number 12, you have to be willing to provide value even if you get nothing out of it, right? Like a lot of times I'll refer people to people. I will, you know, help somebody with a question they have and expect nothing of it. And I'm telling you that builds the best relationships because a lot of times people are out here for themselves, but you have to be a giver or you have to be really, really invested in seeing other people win if you want to be a natural networker, if you want to be a successful networker. It can't always be about you. But I do believe in in good karma, right? I do think do good unto others and and good will be done unto you. If you are genuine about how you're helping other people win, not being stingy with things, you know, like just being a good person, I do think that will come back to you fully. Now, here are some times that I've witnessed great networking, and I just want to talk to you guys about these situations, and that will probably give you some insight into how you can make your own networking better. So here is somebody, Brianna Moore. I love that girl. So basically, we met when we were both just graduated from college. I want to say 2013, or maybe it was 2014 early. I remember she messaged me on LinkedIn, and she said she was basically like, typed on the internet people who just graduated from college and were trying to find their way around the city or whatever it was. And I think like an article came up for me that I had written on Huffington Post or or Madden Noir, one of that. 
And she sent me a message on LinkedIn and she was like, Raina, let's meet up because we both are in the same, you know, boat. I'm here in New York. We can do lunch or whatever. And we had lunch by the riverfront, I remember. And we've just been cool ever since because we found what a mutual interest, a mutual hustle point. Like legit, our mutual hustle point was we're trying to make it life after college. And she legit just sent me a message on LinkedIn and was just very genuine about it. And me, I'm like, I have nothing to lose because for me, I really wanted to build what a community with other young professionals who were hustling just like me. Another example of somebody that I think did something that that was great with networking was Shay Rodriguez of the Goals Podcast. So um, I want to say a few months into launching Dreams and Drive, I had a byline on exonicole.com that talked about, you know, 10 things you should know before launching a podcast. And I did that purpose purposefully because I wanted to bring exposure to the podcast, but I also wanted to open myself up to other podcasters who may have questions. And the purpose of my article was that, and that's exactly what happened. Shay was launching or had launched her podcast goals, the podcast, and she reached out to me and said, hey girl, you know, I love this, this, this article really spoke to me. I think we should, you know, connect because we're both doing the same thing. And Shay has been another person who has really been in my corner and really have has been, you know, really helpful in along the dream driving journey. She's actually the person who helped me think through my whole merchandise uh, strategy and going wholesale and all that stuff because she has she has uh, connections and just experience in retail. I was on her podcast. She was on my podcast. And that all started from her reaching out to me after reading an article that she found online. There are ways, right? There are ways to connect with people, whether that's DMing them on social media, whether that's finding their their uh, email, which it's very easy to do nowadays. Definitely, if you feel like you have a mutual hustle point with somebody, that's a, always a great way to connect with them. So another way that someone connected with me is Woodland Dorson. Uh, if you guys love my new headshots, when I had that fro and it was just that power shot, she was the one who shot them. And I really liked her approach because her approach to networking, I'm going to use it as networking because now she's in my network, right? Like now we have numbers, we'll exchange, we exchange in conversation, like, you know, it's a real friendship that has been formed because of what she pitched me a collaboration like she said hey I'd love to work with you I love your podcast let's do like you know I'm gonna offer you a free shoot and that was the starting point of us building a relationship that was mutually beneficial so sometimes you have to know how to approach somebody so for her as a photographer me as a podcaster being that we both live in like the same area That was very strategic and also very smart of her because maybe if she had just sent me something like or just sent me a message, maybe we wouldn't have been able to connect the way that we did. But I always think if there's a way that you can help somebody, that can be a great way, right? What's the value you provide to that person that can be mutually beneficial? And I'm going to tell you a story about how I use LinkedIn to get a feature. So everyone always asks me, Raina, how did you get an Apple podcast? Raina, how did you do this? And I'm going to tell you the simple, in the simplest way possible. So I wanted to be an Apple podcast. That was my goal. I wanted to be on the feature of it and I didn't know how to go about it, but I thought through it. I used my research skills. I said, all right, if I want to be an Apple podcast, first of all, I have to know somebody in your Apple podcast. I don't know anybody who, who's on Apple podcast. How do I find out who works at Apple podcast? Well, LinkedIn is like the best professional directory that you have access to and it's free. So I went onto LinkedIn and I typed in at that time, it was iTunes podcast. And I saw all the lists of everybody who works there. And you know what I did? I said, all right, who runs the place? I'm going to connect myself. I'm going to to reach out to this person. So I found the person's name. I sent them a message and even find their email, sent them a LinkedIn message, right? A lot of times people's LinkedIn messages aren't as like bombarded as a regular email is, right? 
So I sent them a LinkedIn message, told told him a little bit about the podcast and just very strategically said, hey, I'd love to just learn a little bit more about what Apple is doing or how I can leverage the Apple podcast platform to grow. That led him into, that was an easy yes. When you're connecting with people, you always want to think about how can I get them to an easy yes? He said, you know, I'd love to hop on the phone with you. Let's schedule a call. I said, okay. And from that, it was history. Through that call, I was able to what? I was able to get him in conversation, which I knew was my winning point. I could get you in conversation. I can make you fall in love with me, basically. And so, you know, we're engaged in conversation and I didn't have a specific ask, but he just said, hey, you know, do you have any interesting episodes coming up? And I think because I was able to sell him my mission or just he he just felt it when I talked to him, he then wanted to find ways that we can be mutually beneficial to one another. And we did, right? Like my episode 32 ended up getting featured from me just taking a chance on myself and reaching out to a stranger via LinkedIn. There's so many things that can happen if you just put yourself out there. So many things. Like I remember another time on LinkedIn, um, I really wanted to talk to somebody who worked at the Oprah Winfrey show. So what did I do? I typed in the little, you know, search bar Oprah Winfrey and LinkedIn will tell you the people who you're connected to first who may have that background. And then they'll tell you your other, you know, second degree connection, third degree connection. And it just so turned out that there was somebody in my first degree connection that I, that had previous, previously worked at the LinkedIn or previously worked at the Oprah Winfrey show. So, you know, I saw this woman, I reached out to her, sent her a message and it was just so ironic around this time I had been posting about the work that I had been writing about interviewing black men and black women who attended Princeton. And I was posting about it on LinkedIn, which is also very important when you're networking is you have to make sure that you're putting your stuff out there that people can reference, that people can refer to. So because she's my LinkedIn connection, she had been seeing this. I had been on her radar. I didn't even know. So with me just reaching out to her and saying, hey, you know, we're LinkedIn buddies. I would love to just learn more about what you are doing at the Oprah Winfrey show or what you did there. She said, Raina, I work at Fox now. I've been a fan of your writing. I am producing a show that's going to be talking about people from the inner city who like went to good colleges, something like that. Would you like to be on the show? And that's how I got my first ever Fox 5 Good Day New York feature. And it's just ironic how that stuff happens, but it's like you really do have to put yourself out there because you never know. But if you put yourself out there, you also want to make sure that you have something for people to look at. So what are my favorite tools and resources? So number one, LinkedIn. That's my go-to, guys. I think LinkedIn is where every dream driver needs to have a profile. That's the best way to keep track of who you're connecting with. See who you want to connect with. Do your research. It's a great tool. A streak is another, um, it's a Gmail resource that I use. It's very, very good for, it's, it's an email CRM. So you can keep track of who you're reaching out to. You can label the status of your pitch or whatever it is. And what I love about streak is that it also allows you to schedule emails so if you are you know up late at night you don't always want the time stamp on that email to be like one o'clock in the morning so you can schedule emails later so it's a great email crm if you want to just look into something of course i love gmail i love my google docs i love the whole google suite When it comes to organizing and having a calendar, Calendly is a tool that I love. Something that I recommend is if you are actively networking with people, you should have a calendar dedicated to scheduling time or, you know, whether that's a day, whether that's some type of time schedule, whatever it is, use or have a way to automate that whole process. Have a way that's automated that people can automatically book time to be on your calendar. I'm telling you, if you send people a link in that email, email and said, Hey, schedule some time to chat with me here. They will number one, 
have no excuse not to get back to you, right? There's not going to have to be a back and forth of emails. There's just a one click. So definitely invest in some type of online calendar, some kind of online booking tool. Because when you are networking, when you're having a lot of conversations, you want to make sure that it's easily organized and that it's automatically on your calendar so that you don't forget about the appointment. As I mentioned on the onset of this episode, books, like if you don't know what you're doing, you can get very detailed information on how to be better at it. So my recommended books are Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. And I really love the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And if you want to purchase those books or check them out, just go to the Dreams and Drive bookstore. That's dreamsanddrive.com. So if you like these tips, remember you can find your direct networking strategy, lots of places. But basically, the keys are is finding what's going to be the point of conversation. How can you get someone to saying yes to talking with you one more time? How can you provide value? How can you build community so that you can have access to an interchange of or exchange of information or resources, right? Always think about that. But the biggest thing when it comes to networking is staying organized. So if you guys want to get my free networking spreadsheet where you can list everyone that you've ever known, everyone that you've networked with before, everyone that you want to network with and just organize it in a one place, go to dreamsanddrive.com slash free. That's dreamsanddrive.com slash free. Scroll down to networking. You can download it there. It's also going to be listed on the episode show notes for this episode that you can find dreamsanddrive.com and click on episode 171. All right, guys. And if you found this episode useful, please share it with a friend. I really count on you each week to help grow the Dreams and Drive community. And the best thing you could do is to tweet this, to Instagram story it, to make a post about it, to Facebook, LinkedIn it, whatever. Share it with one person or share it with a lot of people that you think will also get a lot from all the tips and advice and keys to success that we shared today. And I do have strategy and brainstorming sessions available. So if you feel like you want to work with me one-on-one to work through your own networking pitch, your own networking strategy, or even marketing strategies that we talked about in episode 170, you can check out my packages at dreamsanddrive.com slash book. That's dreamsanddrive.com slash book. And you'll get a better sense of how we might be able to work on a one-on-one capacity. Make sure you're following us. We are Dreams and Drive across the board on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can use the hashtag Dreams and Drive as well. If you are not already subscribed, please, please subscribe wherever you're listening. Um, I really appreciate it. And it also helps because you'll get notifications every time we have a new episode. All right. If you want some Dreams and Drive gear, we're always selling. We're still selling. We have t-shirts left hoodies left and crew neck sweatshirts left just go to dreamsanddrive.com slash shop that's dreamsanddrive.com slash shop all right keep dreaming keep driving and we'll chat again in episode 172 we are returning to our question and answer our interviews the staple of dreams and drive and our first guest in october is going to be chris morrow who is the ceo and co-founder of loudspeakers network it was a great episode i'm so excited for you guys to hear from him so stay tuned for that